Hello, hello and welcome. Uh, welcome to this uh, episode of the Four Thinkers Talk series. My name is Dr. Ivo Pezzuto. I am a professor of global economics and competitiveness at uh, ISM Paris and the founder of Ivo Pezzuto Power Thinking Lab. Uh, in this space, we um, typically invite prominent and emerging entrepreneurs, company leaders, forward thinkers, in order to share their thought-provoking ideas, expertise on business, economics, uh, entrepreneurship, marketing, latest trends, uh, technology, and sustainable business model. Uh, today, I'm very thrilled uh, to have here with me as a guest, Vincenzo Riili, um, distinguished marketing professional, expert, and leader. And uh, um, it's a really a great pleasure to uh, talk with him and to learn from him a lot of his uh, wealth of knowledge and experience in uh, marketing. Uh, Vincenzo, welcome and thank you very much for being here. Thank you so much for the invitation. I'm very glad to be here and talking to you today. It's, it's great to have you here and to see you again. It's, it's really nice. Um, well, Google. Uh, Vincenzo is uh, the... Uh, Chief Marketing Officer of Google Italy. Google doesn't need an introduction. <laughs> uh, everybody knows Google, evidently. Uh, what we can say about Google, uh, for, for starters, is just a couple of uh, uh, basic informations. Uh, Google is part of uh, uh, its parent company, Alphabet Inc., uh, Inc. Uh, leading tech firm founded in 1998 by Larry Page and Sergey Brin. The firm has grown from a search engine to a multifaceted uh, tech giant, uh, influencing many industries. Uh, we all know, we're all familiar with search engine, advertising, uh, Google Analytics, uh, and uh, uh, all kinds of other things from hardware, software, services, cloud computing, uh, and everything else. So really um, giant leading uh, uh, um, player in, in this uh, very space. Um, under the leadership of uh, Sunda Pichai, uh, the CEO of Google and Alphabet, we've seen uh, significant uh, uh, innovations and progress, and uh, um, even in the, in the leadership and in the uh, management of the organization. Um, the, in this particular uh, interview, we want to focus a little bit on the trends and on marketing, evidently, having the uh, pleasure and honor of having here, Vincenzo. So without further ado, Vincenzo, let me start asking you uh, first question just to introduce you and to uh, let our viewers know more about yourself. Um, tell us something about your uh, background, um, your journey towards becoming the chief marketing officer of Google Italy. What pivotal, pivotal moments shaped your career and led you to this uh, important leadership role? Yeah, sure. Uh, well, I've been in the market now for 20 plus years, so a long time. Um, basically, I started marketing uh, within Unilever. Uh, I, I joined what at the time was Renault as the School of Marketing. Uh, let's say, what now we say traditional marketing, at the time it was just marketing. And, um, and I was uh, quite lucky because I I worked, um, I'm Italian, I work in an Italian operating company, then I moved to the US and then I started working in what you never call the, you know, innovation center. So uh, areas where you can, you know, talk to consumers ac across the globe or the regions. And, um, you know, after uh, understanding what insights uh, you, you get by talking to them, then actually, uh, you know, delivering products um, that uh, were, you know, in line with what consumer wanted. And I did that for about 15 years uh, in different businesses, uh, um, in, uh, in personal care, in home care, then in, in beverage. And um, yeah, so that obviously was a, was a good starting point. Over there, you, you learn a lot about marketing, about consumer, but also about business because uh, marketing in that, on those, um, uh, you know, industry, FNCGs is also a leading function that is responsible also for, you know, the PNL for um, the results. So you learn on one hand, you know, obviously marketing skills on the other managerial and, and business skills. Then obviously there was a, an opportunity at Google. I always been a kind of <laughs> technology geek uh, since I was a teenager. I used, I used to, to program in, in, in COBOL, which I understand now 
it's a, a program just using uh, some some bands actually um and then and then you know google was looking for a market here uh, within italy and uh, and and i joined the company here so let's say uh, you know about 20 plus year in marketing and in the last uh, eight uh, plus years uh, at google where obviously it's a different kind of business uh, a different kind of um, industry um, but is uh, extremely interesting because you are able to work on products and services that uh, you know are new you need to to market something which is doesn't exist um did not exist before there's not any playbook to do so that's actually my journey to this Absolutely. Part. and also i imagine um massive uh, uh, um you know influence and uh, yeah, uh, from uh, innovations from anything that's going on in the global um uh, network of uh, you know there's a lot of learning and the transfer of knowledge and capabilities uh, uh, innovations within the organization you know thank you very much it's very nice that combination of uh, being a marketer you know a marketing guy that learned from uh, unilever you know from the very um, best uh, places where you can learn uh, uh, marketing on the the data and the uh, and uh, the practical stuff and the the, the financials as you said and at the same time to combine that with uh, the technological uh, passion, you know, which connecting these two things together is, uh, is quite amazing. So that's why I think it's really important. Uh, now, uh, in relation with uh, uh, relating to the concept of technology and innovation, which you just mentioned, uh, today we have so many, you know, amazing, innovative, uh, uh, transformative technologies that uh, are reshaping the uh, the world in which we live and are, we are just starting you know with gen ai uh, artificial, artificial intelligence and many other things like uh, virtual reality augmented reality immersive uh, experience uh, uh, search engine you guys are the, uh, the you know the leaders uh, uh, in that area but also uh, in the ai environment the AI assistant, chatbots, uh, and uh, wearables, and many other things that are on the market. So the world is uh, really uh, completely um, revolutionized by this incredible uh, innovation, transformative innovations we are seeing these days. How do you think, uh, since you have a, a sort of a privileged uh, exposure uh, working with Google and in that industry, how do you think this transformative uh, technologies are really reshaping uh, marketing strategies uh, and customer journey. Uh, how are they impacting this thing? And, um, you know, based on your experience, what is your impression? And uh, if you have any mind, any specific example to, uh, to, 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 to share with us? Sure. Well, I mean, obviously, it's a, it's a, it's a moment of uh, transforming uh, technology. But the truth is that marketing has always been transformed by technology. Uh, I mean, if we think about when radio, for example, was invented, uh, you know, imagine at that time, the market here at that time, the salary they can go in every home at very low cost and learning how to actually communicate uh, mm -hmm. with consumer, right? And, and obviously, now we consider a radio very old technology. But at that time, it probably was, uh, was a massive one. When TV came, yeah, the same thing applied. Yeah? Suddenly, you can you can have um, videos um, and uh, music uh, and, and sound with colors, for example, again in, in the homes of people. So uh, today, um, the the big difference though is that um, obviously we have the digital revolution uh, with the internet. But then, after a few years, in fact, uh, mobile came in, and now after only a few years. AI is coming, right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, the, the, the three of them that I just mentioned, so the user internet, mobile, and AI itself would it be like a major technology that would probably, you know, uh, be considered, you know, uh, something that, you know, that you would talk for, for years, right? Those That's are true. coming very, very close to each other. And that is a big difference. So the speed on which these technology are coming in and they are integrating each other, right. actually really revolutionary. And that is, is the, the, the main, the main difference versus the past. Um, in fact, uh, it's so, it's so hard to actually uh, be at pace with the velocity of this, they even to imagine how this, the, the, the consumer journey changing is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is almost, almost impossible for the near future, right? You can just see 
or the president's coming. Because the other thing is, it's not just technology which changes the way to market to consumer, hence to communicate with consumer, but also these technology are profoundly changing the behavior of consumers. Hence, you have a double shifting in um, of change. On one hand, technology that allows you, for example, uh, to talk on a mobile phone in any time, in any moments, etc., and therefore a, a media to you know to reach people. But at the same time, you have the usage consumer, that, for example, use the phone, you know, and maybe they have two screens in front of them, or even three sometimes, you know, TV, a laptop, or a mobile, right? And, and, and hence, for a professional, it's a very interesting time because you need to understand, on one hand, how the technology allows you to do things. On the other, also understand the human nature, which is very complicated, and try to con connect the two in such a way that you can promote your product or your services uh, effectively, but also uh, moving with, uh, with the, the, the way consumers are moving across, uh, across, across the globe. Yeah, and I, I think uh, uh, to these days, we see a lot of that, the people, especially the younger generations, the Gen Z uh, and uh, Gen Y, Gen Z, et cetera, they are uh, adopting uh, very quickly some of these, uh, um, you know, they're very digitally, uh, you know, very savvy and, and they are they're really able to, to excel the use very, and, and, and leverage the full potential of this uh, uh, um, innovations uh, uh, in much faster than than than, uh, than before, and um, in Italy in particular, how do you see this uh, transition to AI, um, uh, you know, uh, unfolding? You know, um, of course, you have a significant uh, uh, exposure and and uh, collaborations with Italian companies and many. Um, local and international firms. And uh, do you see an adoption that's moving uh, rather um, fast and, and uh, you know, early adopters moving on very, very, very quickly uh, or some uh, fear of missing out? Um, how is Google supporting Italy, Italy's transition to AI uh, helping firms to leverage this transformative uh, um, uh, technologies for growth uh, and in particular the cloud-based uh, AI solutions uh, that can be used for marketing, advertising, e-commerce and so on. So what is your take on where where is Italy and what, what is Google doing for helping and support this uh, um, transition in the AI era? Oh, I mean, Italy is, uh, as all the country in fact, in developing, in developing world, um, quite interested to know how to adopt AI. Yeah, I, I have to say, I've seen a lot of interest of, um, of you know, many CEOs, uh, but not only them, you know, C-levels across the companies, a big, but also small company to actually uh, look for information to understand how this new technology can help them. And uh, I think it's a big opportunity for Italy, to be honest with you. I mean, you know, Italy has been lagging behind technology in the past, uh, compared to our peer country, let's say, like France or UK, for example. And, uh, and, and that's actually, uh, you know, was not necessarily uh, positive for our economy, which is uh, uh, full of um, uh, amazing companies, but it's very important that technology is used to actually bring this new, you know, what we call the made in Italy into the new, the new world. And I think AI is for us a big opportunity, yeah. I mean, think about it. One of the most important things that I can do is improve produ is improve productivity, and we yeah. know that uh, Italy is you know always has some some kind of uh, troubles in terms of productivity. That's, for example, is where uh, where AI can can help the you know our our ecosystem, which is made of of course some big company, but also a lot of small medium companies that have uh, excellences, but uh, that uh, you know sometimes you know they have trouble in, in scaling up uh, their, their business. AI can really be, I think the technology can, can transform, it can be a second uh, or a third revolution that can really give uh, Italian SMBs in particular, small, small medium company, that kind of extra edge. Because in the past, uh, AI was just, uh, you know, it was a very expensive technology. I mean, it's not a new technology, but uh, um, it was uh, just uh, something that only a huge company could actually get. Uh, like uh, all the new technology coming in. 
now AI is becoming something you can easily, as you, we do talk about cloud before, you can easily be, be assessed by, by, by basically almost every, every company at, uh, let's say, a generally not high cost. And hence, uh, you have the chance of, of also the, the, the small uh, the new company can have access to the, you know, the most amazing uh, yeah. computers, the most amazing data, the most amazing mining. Uh, for, for what it concerns uh, uh, Google, I mean, for example, we have just launched in co co collaboration uh, with uh, some institutions, uh, um, the, a project we call uh, AI for Made in Italy. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a project that supports uh, you know, SMBs, uh, small, video, small video companies, um, to actually up, upskill uh, their, their, you know, their, their learning uh, to uh, AI. Uh, we have uh, done um, collaboration together with the Polytechnic of Milan uh, that uh, produce what we call AI small report. So it's a report that you know people people in small company can go and to understand how they are how they are um, basically within uh, the technology and how they can uh, they can use uh, um, AI uh, in their uh, sector in order mm -hmm. to. Uh, you know, to, to, to learn at least uh, yeah. uh, from, uh, some understanding of how this can, uh, can, can help them. And then obviously we, we also went around the, the, the Italy. Uh, we, we did it in, in, in Bergamo with the uh, Confindustria Metal Meccanica to uh, basically show even some, mm -hmm. with some physical uh, demos how AI can really change uh, uh, the way, for, for example, to produce. And I be, I'm, I've seen an amazing reception of this technology yeah no, that's that's very interesting you know the the um industrial association in the bergamo and the mechanical applications so the uh, industrial application of ai so that's really uh, a great a great uh, um, response it looks like there is a there's a lot of things you guys are doing for the small and medium size also the the large company that's that's very encouraging that's very good and i, I imagine that the the combination of training and teaching and helping the, the country to grow and to learn on one side and the the availability, you know, cloud computing solutions, um, uh, which allow easier access uh, to this service uh, to even smaller companies without uh, the complexity of managing the technology inside, uh, but they can also have it through the cloud. So, yeah, that, that's, that's a great. And by the way, uh, I've seen a lot of... Uh, 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 Google courses, uh, Google training, uh, even for free, going around in the past. I've even taken a couple of them. <laughs> uh, to, so I, I, I confirmed that there is a big uh, effort from uh, all the companies uh, in this industry and players and players like Google to raise the bar of uh, uh, knowledge, to raise the bar of uh, uh, understanding and knowledge. In this. So very, very, I think the first thing it's learning, <laughs> learning yeah. and, understa and understanding. And I think you guys are doing contributing significantly to that uh, space, you know, to, to, to develop the understanding. The, and also the knowledge uh, means understanding what you can do with it. So that means uh, developing new business models, you know, as companies or startups or whatever, small, medium sized, even big companies, they just imagine new ways of doing not only better things, but even new uh, capabilities, new, new business models. So that, that's also, I would imagine, very, very interesting. Um, to this point, um, Vincenzo, the governance, the AI governance, uh, um, uh, and the mindset. Uh, so, um, how would you uh, define? What would you say are the important elements to consider? Companies should consider uh, uh, when they think about this journey, the AI journey. What are the organizational readiness uh, things that must be on their checklist, on their radar? What's really important to make sure that they have a, a, a you know a, a, a proper AI governance and um, AI, responsible AI and, uh, and uh, safe AI uh, uh, in place? Well, what's, the, what's the roadmap? What's the journey that you guys suggest? Well, I mean, again, everything is, uh, is still work in progress, yeah? So we are still in early stages. And uh, as you said before, I think, uh, you know, Google, like other companies, obviously are providing, uh, um, you know, AI, AI solutions. But the end is going to be the company. Then they're going to use it to actually make something out of it. Yeah, uh, like uh, Uber did not invent the GPS. If GPS was invented, then Uber uh, used GPS to deliver, you know, to connect cars 
and um, and, uh, and and customers want to go from A to B. The same thing is going to be with AI. Yeah, AI will be delivered. Obviously, solutions by company like companies like Google. Then there's going to be some creative minds that are going to use it to produce that. When it comes into into mindset, you said. I mean, I think what is very important is and and and, and um, um, is. Uh, and, and I see people are starting thinking this way. So I think we are on the right track. We're not going to have the, the AI department. Okay. You know, in the, in the beginning, when uh, the digital world uh, was uh, was born, there was the digital, you know, part silos of the company, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, AI is going to affect the whole company. So it's not about uh, having a, a part of AI within the company, but every process will be will be enriched. With these new technologies, so I think in terms of of, of, um, uh, of mindset, is okay. It's not how what can I do with AI, but how can I do my current business with the use of AI? Right? It's not changing your business model. Maybe it will be, but in in in, in, in the first thing is okay. How can AI help me? Yeah, from from any anything from marketing, of course, obviously it's something that's very obvious. But even in terms of production, why not even to to do something which uh, could um, could improve uh, maybe uh, internal communications uh, with, with employees. I mean, what I'm trying to say with that is that any kind of area of, of the companies, I think will be, uh, will be affected, improved, change with the use of AI. So AI is going to be like, uh, like something that will, um, will be needed to, to, to be uh, thought, understood by everybody in the organization from the top leader down to, 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 to all the employers. And because of that, the second point, because AI, like all the technology we've been seeing the last years, as I was saying before, are changing. I want to say every 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 day, but you know, every week, every month, there are new models, new applications. They're gonna be a new case study that you learn maybe from companies, maybe are your competitors, or maybe are um, you know applications that are in a different industry, but somehow they can be used by your you know your company. Hence. The mindset has to be of a constant learning process. The time mm -hmm. when, you know, you go to university you, or whatever, you do a training and then you forget about for years in terms of uh, upgrading yourself because you can use what you learn is over. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a constant learning journey. I mean, think about myself, you know, I'm constantly, I'm definitely studying more now than when I was uh, at school, to be honest, yeah, because it's very mm -hmm. hard. To be to be to be basically in tune with all the different news that are coming. So, uh, in other words, uh, mindset is uh, thinking AI as something that can really help the whole process, the whole company. Second, make sure that everybody are hunger, hungry for or hungry for a constant development process of their own competencies. Um, so de developing this uh, this uh, curiosity, this uh, continuous learning uh, uh, approach and mindset. Yeah. And 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 if, um, if I remember correctly from a previous conversation we had, also the 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 in many especially in sometimes in small organization, the data driven mindset is also another thing that sometimes is not yeah. uh, uh, widely spread. So uh, understanding how to uh, first of all um, organize data clean data, make sure the data is, uh, and then of course, uh, 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 enable experimentations, as you said, and learning uh, uh, and combine that with uh, um, the business models, with the talents uh, that people have, uh, sometimes uh, uh, dedicating uh, some uh, you know routine tasks initially to AI, and then of course, uh, uh, um, experimenting and finding, uh, you know, learning how to use uh, and combine this AI to the other uh, part. Yeah. So yeah, that, that's definitely, uh, even I have to say, uh, uh, like everybody else have been using my little practice of AI. I imagine you do the same in your daily activities, you do some, uh, use some uh, AI to summarize some uh, readings or to <laughs> uh, uh, some drafting some, some work or uh, doing some other stuff. We, we all use it. We all learn, starting to learn and use it that way. Uh, do you think Vincenzo that, um, uh, AI can be uh, generative AI can be useful um, also in um, um, advancing uh, um, accessibility, inclusion, diversity, equity. In other words, uh, AI can help 
create situations like, for, for example, uh, reducing biases or uh, creating business models that can be uh, somehow innovative and then that, that may, may, be, uh, may have a positive impact on uh, social good and uh, uh, responsible use. So they might actually improve inclusion, uh, uh, inclusivity for, uh, for consumers, for, for users. Moving well, I think, oh, I mean, it's a, it's a new superpower that, that we have. And I think, uh, you know, there are, there's already a lot of, uh, I think, uh, understanding or making sure that AI is, uh, you know, positive player within society rather than, you know, a negative player when it comes, for example, to biases, as you were saying, you know, I can, I can, I can already think about many applications that can include, uh, um, you know, people uh, in different uh, in different areas. For example, uh, you know, you can use a phone now uh, to 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 see a, a room. Uh, and uh, for example, if you have uh, you know a problem of sight, you can uh, you know detect, for example, where there is a exit a sign. For example, and if you are in a cinema uh, or yeah. if you are in a bar, in a bar, a bar right? So I now you have your phone. You know, you, you, can, you can read the room, and therefore. Uh, improve your life straight away. That's is inclusive itself. Or, for example, if you think about phones, uh, for example, in, in, the, in the Google phone that we have uh, called Pixel, we have a feature that makes sure that you know when you take pictures of uh, um, AI helps uh, to make sure that uh, the the picture uh, and the, for the color of the skin of the person that you've been taking the picture is uh, accurate and uh, and uh, and is more true to, to to what 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 it really shows so i mean again too little uh, example of how ai can uh, already play a role into 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 making sure that the society improves so that absolutely that is uh, something that we can do i mean um google is definitely very keen to make sure that uh, uh, also the algorithm that are that are produced uh, or they are written do not have biases uh, and, and so there is a lot of uh, a lot of effort making sure that uh, uh, from the start uh, you build uh, you build uh, uh, artificial intelligence which uh, take into account uh, um, some mistakes maybe humans being have been doing in the past and make sure it is not reproduced uh, across uh, across uh, across the algorithm for example that we're going to use uh, now and in the future. Absolutely, I, I remember when I when I also took the little intro course to Google, it was saying a responsibility by design, you know, and other oh, things yeah. like oh, compliance yeah. and all those things. Well, I, I learned that part. So yeah, they they, they design, they check, the uh, uh, everything, keeping in mind stakeholders. Uh, hey, Google, we talk about you know we want AI to be bold, hence yeah. uh, it yeah. uh, go against uh, very important challenges. So you don't want to be shy, making sure that you are delivering and maybe changing the world in a positive way, but at the same time responsible because we know uh, it's, it's a very important, it's a powerful technology, therefore we need to do everything with the right responsibility. So we are very keen on these two words. Uh, and since uh, um, Google is uh, uh, globally uh, famous as a leader uh, in, in, uh, in particular in the search engines and in, uh, you know, uh, uh, advertising and supporting and improving analytics related to um, you know, uh, data and advertising and so on, uh, with um, uh, the various uh, uh, models that you have, uh, where do you see this uh, impact? Uh, you know, we know that uh, recently Google has uh, uh, developed a lot of uh, uh, innovations uh, uh, related to combining connecting AI to the search engine for marketing and uh, keywords and content optimizations or link building, and even, uh, you know, to improve the personalized user experience or uh, driving traffic. Where, where do you see this uh, uh, impact of AI, Gen AI, uh, having the most uh, uh, relevance uh, for people that use uh, search engine? No, I mean, obviously, I mean, the search engine that Google has has been uh, improving uh, since, uh, the, you know, the day one, right? So we all believe somehow it's the same product, but in fact, has, uh, has been improving uh, constantly during the, you know, the last uh, 25 years, right? I mean, at the beginning, you could just search, for example, keywords. Now you can, I don't know if you ever use it, but, you know, I use uh, Google Lens, which is basically an application that allows you to make searches through images, right? Mm -hmm. And now every day. And that obviously 
by definition, uses AI, right? It's able to understand what the picture is, uh, what it is, what is not, and that's only through AI. And then through that, is able to actually uh, find out that you know the best uh, answer to your query, right? And obviously, uh, AI is already part of uh, the way the search engine works. I mean, you know, at Google okay. has, uh, has um, let's say, uh, declared himself itself. AI first company since 2016, yeah. Okay. So, um, so since then, even before, in fact, AI is already part of every product yeah. uh, that we have. For example, if you use Gmail and if you don't receive uh, lots of spam, all those spam emails that you get are being be filtered by AI, for example, right? There are, yeah. uh, and it works pretty pretty well. So. Um, as you can see already, I think I think AI is uh, is uh, is playing uh, within in the background to to deliver to deliver uh, powerful experiences, which at the end of the day uh, is what uh, we want. You know, we we as consumer we shouldn't be we're not too much interested in knowing how the magic works. We just want the the magic to work for us. So therefore, if we're looking for the right answer, then uh, AI could. Um, could, uh, could give it to you. For example, you know, I, I'm gonna go soon on holiday, and my my trip around France is being suggested to, to me by Gemini. Yeah, okay. so I was able to. Yeah, I want to go around France a little bit. I have two kids. I I, I prompt, uh, you know, very specifically, you know, how old I am, um, how old are my kids, how long do I want to do car, you know, city by city, and um, and, and, and 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 Gemini. Suggest me and I, I told them that I don't want to go in the south of France. I just want to stay, you know, in some kind of area. So I was a very detailed with the prompty, and the, the the answer was pretty good. And then obviously I checked, obviously because I, I, uh, you know with, with, with the Google search whether you know the, the answer right. was prompt. And uh, but again, again, just like just a, a, a very simple exam, example of how already my query okay. was on. Yeah. Yeah, I absolutely. I have to confirm that, uh, uh, like everybody else, I use uh, Google. I've been using Google for many years uh, for basic things on a search engine, but even and especially in, on vacations, <laughs> uh, even before AI, the ones that we use now, like Gemini or the other uh, um, applications, uh, even even. Even just the search engine was was providing incredible uh, information. So now with Gemini, even more, uh, this is even more uh, powerful. I have I've experienced and I've seen other people going through. Yeah, there is a there is a lot of uh, um, potential there. That's really from basic little things to more complex stuff. There is a lot of potential that, uh, and um, uh, in particular when I think about. Uh, uh, Project Astra, I just want to mention about this uh, because I was watching some movies a few days ago. Uh, the image, re image recognition, the na natural language processing, the, 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 and all the other parts, um, the multimodal information. There, there is a lot of uh, uh, really powerful opportunities in uh, uh, using uh, these uh, uh, tools. Uh, because they really enable um, very important experience uh, for the for for the users. I don't know if you want to say something about uh, uh, this particular uh, application. No, really, I mean, it's it's an amazing demonstration of what AI could do uh, and will do. Uh, obviously, at the moment we're still in an early phase. Um, but, uh, you know, I think it was a very powerful demonstration of how, uh, you know, um, the technology of multimodality in this case, which is uh, the ability to, you know, to, to basically process voice images um, within, within the same um, uh, starting point, yeah. allows uh, some, some application which are really revolutionary. So, I mean, it's um, it's still an early phase. I mean, obviously, it was uh, released uh, during the I/O that we did. Uh, I think in May, yes, in May, and um, and but it shows the velocity of how how uh, technology is moving. Yeah? I mean, a year ago, uh, that would be probably uh, like uh, something that we would have thought to come in more than one year. In fact, yeah. you know, it was released only one year after. Um, Let's say the launch of Gemini, 
was called Bard before for Google. So, I mean, for me, the main the main thinking is how fast it's going. To be honest with you. Yeah, yeah, and the fact that it's very you know. Uh, you can ask questions in a conversational pace, make interaction feel much more natural. It's really uh, very, very easy to use, very comfortable and, uh, and very it's powerful. Very magic. You know, from yeah. a market here, we use a lot this word, but this is really magical product, in fact, you know, from a, from a, from a user uh, point. Absolutely. And that's, the re that's really uh, amazing for, for many uh, applications. Um, in particular, um, I was wondering, you've mentioned Gemini. Gemini is really like many other products like this. They, they really help uh, uh, search. Uh, they, they help a lot of activities for uh, uh, you know, uh, productivity, scalability, and uh, um, personalization. So now uh, I think this is a dimension that's very important. The, the fact you can have a pers tailored uh, experience uh, you know, by adapting and understanding the individual users' needs and preferences. Is that something that you uh, and your teams are uh, experiencing now with this type of uh, tools, uh, whether they, you use them or, or your client use the Gemini? No, I mean, obviously, I mean, I think that one of the major, let's say, um, advantage that AI gives you and will give is the ability to go at scale, uh, but, you know, with... Uh, um, customized messages. So there will be mm -hmm. the, the opportunity to, you know, to change creativity, yeah. um, um, which is accordingly with the person that receives it in the right moment, the right contest. And that's, we obviously increase the return on investment, you know, because if you are able to deliver a message to the right person in the right moment, yeah. when that person really needs it, yeah. then obviously it will be it will be well received and obviously ai is the only way to do that scale yeah you can do yeah. um you can't but need ai if you want to do a scale that's i think it's going to change everything yeah and it's going to it's, it's, it's going to change really the ability to deliver yeah. uh, uh, outstanding marketing campaigns um a, a scale with a relatively low cost i would say so you know quite intrigued to yeah. see also again how other companies uh, will use it uh, in the market. Yeah, also because you know traditionally segmentation and targeting has always been uh, by segments, <laughs> by 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 clusters and, and by groups. And in this case, with this real time dynamic segmentation, so with the big data, with the uh, ability to personalize uh, uh, profiling one by one and uh, deliver to users what exactly what they want, what they need based on their specific individual behaviors, preferences, uh, characteristics, that's big, uh, in fact, a big transformations. Uh, and uh, uh, this personalization at scale, you know, not just personalization uh, of one person, but of scale, potentially everyone, that means a big difference. Um, and of course, the addition of uh, the um, you know not only personalizing the offer the preferences colors design layout uh, uh, ad copy whatever uh, uh, visual but also the communication you know virtual assistant they can actually communicate in a personalized way uh, deliver different formats that that looks like uh, an amazing uh, breakthrough a change in the uh, in the marketing advertising communication is that, is that correct. Oh yeah, I mean that is the, the next uh, the next part. I mean obviously we call them agents. The, the last I O, so that they ability to actually use uh, uh, you know AI to communicate in a very simple way, personalized ways is probably going to revolutionize uh, the way we interact. Um, for example, in retails um, or um, retail, they can be either physical or, or, or e-commerce, but the ability to actually be able to ask questions and be answered. Uh, with uh, the, the the most amazing way to understanding uh, uh, what they offer, you know, because sometimes you know you 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 know you if you are a company that maybe offer many many products or many many services, it's very hard uh, even for the most expert of the of the seller to be able to actually uh, know everything about the product itself, for example, right? But in that case, you will be able to do that uh, accordingly. Again, 
do it, do it at the scale. So I, I think that part is uh, going to revolutionize the communication between customers and, and companies, I would say. And automate some of the marketing activities and reduce uh, uh, you know, time and uh, pr improve productivity. Uh, and uh, uh, of course, getting a lot, so because you know, when we talk about AI, um, evidently there's a lot of automation, but there is also a lot of uh, data that can uh, bring insight, consumer insights, identify patterns and uh, be used for, uh, uh, even for predictive uh, uh, um, scores. And so to, to have a better effectiveness of uh, targeting certain uh, things or, or to work on sentiment analysis. And uh, so this is really very, um, uh, um, you know, providing sort of instant uh, 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 assistant and uh, on-demand uh, services. So, um, the, the when when it comes to your marketing experience in particular, uh, Vincenzo, um, what uh, are the um, not only focused on AI? What are the areas uh, in in marketing that you see uh, more relevant these days? Uh, or, you know, it's more like segmentation, targeting, communication. Uh, data, uh, uh, revolutionary marketing research, where, where in general, w w looking uh, at your practice, your marketing practice, where do you see marketing going, uh, AI uh, and not AI is included, you know, AI aside, in general, in marketing, what is what is on your, um, yeah. on, on your radar, what, what is the most important uh, uh, things that you're considering in uh, moving forward? Well, I think the biggest challenge I think for marketeers right now is to be able to, of course, deliver on performance marketing, which is what we, we talk until now, but then also uh, build brands. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it's um, I mean, the two things has to go together. Mm -hmm. uh, so obviously, in the past, before digital came, there were more branding rather than performance marketing, then we move into performance marketing. You know, I've been seeing both, right? Because uh, again, I, I used to work in a traditional marketing company, now at Google. I think you have to do both. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. can't but to grow your brand. Hence means to have a unified message. Um, and uh, and uh, and if the, in the same time you have micro conversation, then it becomes very complicated, right? Because mm -hmm. uh, we used to have like, you know, a TV commercial going TV, everybody will see the same thing. Yes, you did not have a personalized communication, but at least you'll be able to actually govern the brand building part, right? Mm -hmm. If at the same time you are starting to have different conversations, then you might have different kind of brand perception. In the long run, this will not work. So I think that's the biggest challenge the market here have. Hence, building brands, therefore giving to the next CMO uh, a most valuable brand. So do, working for the medium long term, but also, of course, give your CFO uh, the numbers that he or she wants uh, because it's uh, you know you need to deliver against results. So that is the main the main challenge. And again, I hope AI will be able to help on that because until now the micro conversation were not necessarily very linked with branding. Hence, AI can potentially be able to actually have micro conversation that have the same cohesion brand proposition would be like a new way of doing marketing. And uh, related to the thing of brand, I imagine um, uh, naturally that having such a prestigious, famous brand globally, you know, a well-known uh, trusted brand, uh, how in your role as a marketing uh, um, expert, as a CMO, as chief marketing officer of the Italian practice, um, of course, there is a lot of um, you know, benefits of uh, support being part of this family google family globally um, and of course you receive uh, um, part of the the um, you know decisions of the corporate strategy from global uh, um, corporate headquarters uh, and and also give back how much is this uh, um, you know uh, how do you in a brand like this how do you balance local and global, you know, you, you are a global giant, uh, uh, you know, uh, super brand uh, at the same time, which you have some of the huge benefits of being part of this uh, great uh, global brand, but then you have to 
uh, adapted to the local country, which is Italy or France or India or uh, yeah. Argentina, US, whatever. So how do you uh, uh, find that balance there between global and local? We always talk about this uh, transnational, uh, global <laughs> type of thing. How much uh, is the uh, similarities and differences, even when the, a service is a global service, pretty much? Uh, with a lot of similarities, but how do you really, uh, uh, you know, uh, maintain the 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 the, the, the results, the performance, the, the the momentum, keeping a balance between the local specific needs and what the corporate uh, uh, wants to achieve with the global brand? No, I mean this is a it's a, it's a challenge for for any global corporation. I used to work at Unilever, I was a global. Uh, person and now I'm a local person at Google and in both uh, companies uh, um, there was always this uh, complication because on one hand you want to have a global proposition for what it concerns Google also you have a global product by definition because uh, it's, yeah. uh, it probably goes at scales and so the challenge is making sure that you know what it lands uh, uh, in the market is on one hand um, you know good quality hence uh, we give back Feedback, for example, to the engineer team to make sure that if there are some okay. things, for example, uh, language, for, for example, for Gemini, we actually help them to, you know, to fine tune um, okay. um, the product uh, to actually have a good use in Italian, just to give an example. Um, when it comes into go to market, we're looking for a way to, uh, to deliver markets, uh, to deliver marketing campaigns that are, uh, yes, in tune. With the Google brand equities, but at the same time can deliver again Italian, Italian, Italian market. So it's a it's a it's a constant balance. Uh, I think uh, you, you you don't never have a perfect model. Um, I think Google is quite well balanced because uh, it, it allows uh, us to do a lot of lo local things. For example, the the, pro the program I was telling before AI for Made in Italy. That is a, is an Italian program. Um, the uses, of course, the, the AI coming from uh, the US, but it's delivered in a very local way. For example, work with the, the Confiduce, for example, uh, yeah. in this case. So, yes, it's, uh, it's part of my job. That's why I'm quite happy to, to, to do it. It's what keeps me very, very motivated, interested every day in doing this. Absolutely, absolutely. Enter prompt here. Okay, can't be that hard. How about generate an image of a cat playing guitar? Is that how it works? Am I doing AI? Yeah, it just does whatever you type. What a last minute gift ideas you can make with arts and crafts. Plan a workout routine to get bigger calves. Help me think of titles for my tell-all memoir. What's something smart I can say about Renoir? Generate another image of a cat playing guitar. If a girl calls me a snack, how do I reply? If yeah, that's how it works, you're doing AI. Make this email sound more professional before I hit send. What's a good excuse to cancel dinner with my friends? We're literally sitting right here. There's no wrong way to prompt. Yeah, you're doing it. There's no wrong way to prompt. It does whatever you just try. prompt your prompt in the prompt bar. Or just generate an image of a cat playing guitar. You know I can do other stuff, right? Okay, uh, so thank you very much. Thank you very much, Vincenzo. It was very insightful, very great uh, to meet you again and to have you share all this uh, great insights and great knowledge about uh, uh, your experience as a CMO at Google. Look forward to talking to you soon and thank you very much for attending this meeting. It was a pleasure talking to you and I will see you soon. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.